Now, once you understand how you can make this sign up endpoint, let's take a look at how you can store the user input value inside your MongoDB database. So what we have to do is we need to first connect MongoDB database and then get the user input from this input text boxes. And then I'm going to store that input text boxes values inside my MongoDB database. So instead of this response, I'm going to first call the connect Mongo function. So I'm going to say here import connect Mongo from specify here a double dot forward slash then again specify double dot forward slash and then again specify double dot forward slash then i'm going to select the database folder and then connection dot js file and inside this file as you know we have connect dot mongo so let me copy this function specify that here and this is going to call the connect mongo function from this file just out of that we need to catch here errors so i'm going to see here catch error and then if you have error, then I'm going to just return that error using response.json. And inside this JSON, I'm going to return that error. So in the double quote, I'm going to say connection fail. If there is no error, then I'm going to say here only post method is accepted. I'm going to accept only post method using this sign up endpoint. So to check the post method, we need to say here if request dot method if it is equal to post if it is a type of post request then execute this if statement otherwise return the else statement so inside this else i'm simply going to say response dot status which is going to be 500 which is the error status and then i'm going to say here dot json and inside the json i'm returning the message which is going to be http method not valid only post accepted just out of that inside this if statement right here we need to say if we don't have the user input from this form when the user click on this sign up button we're going to get all the values of this input text boxes so here we need to check if we don't have the user input so we need to say here if the request dot body so we pass here exclamation mark like this and then i'm going to say here if we don't have the user input then return response dot status 404 which is the error status dot json and i'm going to return error and the error is going to be don't have form data if you don't have form data then you're going to get this error message and if you have form data then you can get this data in the request dot body variable i'm going to destructure all the values of the form data inside an object so i'm going to see here constant in the object i'm going to destructure all the values as you know we have username, email, and password. You're going to get this object from this form when you click on the sign up button. Now, just out of that, when we have values inside these variables, right down here, we need to check the duplicate users. So if you have two users with the same name, then I'm going to return an error message because the user is already registered in this application. So we don't need to register the user again. So in that case, I'm going to say here constant check existing is equal to and then i'm going to call here await now because this is the async function we can call here await users i don't have users so let me remove it and at the top right here i'm going to say import users from in the single code i'm going to say double dot forward slash double dot forward slash and then i'm going to specify here model and from the model i can access the schema file so inside the schema, I have this user object. So I can access that inside this statement. I'm going to say here users, this variable dot find one. And I'm going to find the user with the email. So if there is a matching email inside my database of the user, that that is the existing user. So for that, I'm simply going to say if we have value inside this check existing, then I'm going to return a response dot status, which is going to be four double two. And then I'm going to return JSON with message. The message is going to be user already exist. And just out of that, we don't have anything inside this variable. So if this condition return false, then I'm going to store all the values of the input text boxes in the database. Now, as you know, you can't store the password value as it is. You need to hash that value for the security reason. For that, you need to hash this password. So I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to say here npm install bcrypt.js. This is going to install this library in my project. So 
right down here i'm simply going to say here users dot create i'm going to create a new data inside mongodb database so i'm going to call here a method create inside this method you need to first pass the data so in the object we pass username this variable then i'm going to pass email and then i'm going to pass password but as i said we don't need to store the password as it is instead we need to convert this password and hash it so we pass here a colon and pass here await and here i'm going to call a function hash now let me just get this function from the big web library so i'm going to say here import in the object you have to say hash from in the single quote you specify bcrypt.js and write down here i'm going to specify here hash and here we specify the password and the salt value now this bcrypt hashing function allows us to build a password security and it always hashes every password with the salt so we are going to hash the password before we store it in the database now once you've done that once you hash your password just pass your comma and create a function here this function is going to return error if there is an error when storing the data in the mongodb database and it also going to return data variable inside this data variable we are going to have all the data of the response so right down here i'm going to say if error if we have error then return response dot status which is going to be 404 dot json and inside this json i'm simply going to return this error this one i'm going to get this error from this parameter so sort of that if i don't have any error then i'm going to return the response dot status which is 201 and then i'm going to call here dot json in the object i'm going to return status true and user is going to be data this one this variable so inside this variable i'm going to have the response from the mongodb database that's it your registration endpoint is now completely ready let me save the changes let me test this post request now to test this endpoint i'm going to open the postman api testing tool and here i'm going to open the endpoint called sign up so i'm going to head on to the localhost 3000 api auth and then we have the endpoint name sign up and the type of http request is post so i'm going to select here post just out of that we need to pass body as well with this request so if i select here none and make a request then i'm going to get error message don't have form data this is because we didn't return anything with this sign up now what we have to do is we have to return data with this sign up so the sign up endpoint is going to store all that values in the mongodb database so let me click on this raw and select the json format inside this i'm going to create an object with a username email and password right now you can see the password but when i store the password the password will completely hashed so when i click on the send button you can see it's going to store all this value in the mongodb database and i'm going to have my response what i want i'm going to have status true and i'm going to get this user mongodb is uniquely create id for all the documents and you can notice here we have hash password here now once we have this data in the mongodb database now we can log in with this data with email and password so let's take a look at how to do it 